cold Maryland brewed beer in my hand. I'm sorry to come here tonight and announce that I'm very concerned that the state of Maryland is turning into a banana republic. Third world country where a couple of well-connected lobbyists get together in a smoke-filled back room come out and produce a bill that will destroy your industry. Really. I mean, you know why they do it in the countries where they're able to have that dictatorship type. It's because of uh, what we call corporate cronyism. Crony capitalism. Get a couple of people that help you out a lot, and you go and you destroy all the competition. Well, it's not going to happen. You guys, I have a lot of confidence in you. I think you're going to speak out forcefully, loudly. There's craft breweries in the Baltimore region. I've visited most of them. Toured the Peabody Heights, Heavy Seas, Waverly, Union, Brewers Art. Here I am at Key. I have been through these places. They employ Marylanders. They pay good family supporting wages for Maryland families. They're doing exactly what we want them to do by creating jobs and economic development and wages. And what's the response from the state of Maryland? Do they say thank you? No. They say we appreciate what you're doing? No. Do they say to the rest of the country, we welcome the craft brewing industry to come? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We, we have to deal with uh, major problems, okay? We've got to, uh, you know, and I support and I'm a champion for the Baltimore region. Oh, we got to uh, get tens of millions of dollars appropriated for the school system. Okay, I can see that. Oh, we want to get tens of millions of dollars appropriated for the roads. Okay, I'm okay on that. We need a lot of money appropriated for our hospitals. Okay, I'm all for that. And we need money for mass transit for people to get from one place to another. Okay, that's great. Who's going to pay for it? I'll tell you who's going to pay for it. It's the small businesses of this state who right now, I read off these breweries, I probably don't have all of them in Baltimore City, but these folks right now are producing and doing everything that we've asked them to do. And what do we do? We go in the back room. I'm not talking about all the delegates and all the senators. A lot of them I know and I serve with, and they're good people. But what we have here is crony capitalism, where a couple of well-plugged-in individuals go in the back room and come out with a bill that puts you out of business. And trust me, this is a bill that puts you out of business. And it not only puts you out of business, it's the class five holders, it puts the class seven and the class eight microbreweries and farm breweries out of business. Because they're next. You attack one part of this tremendous craft beer sector and you attack everybody. And you need to stand up, go down to Annapolis, Tell the Senate to do the right thing. Get those amendments off the House bill. All the industry asks is that the government get out of the way and let you do your job. Yeah. 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 This, is, this is how crazy this situation is. Maryland, I think since the medieval times, has had a 500 barrel limit on brewery, micro small breweries being allowed to sell that amount at the place where the beer is brewed. The next tightest state in the United States of America has a limit, not of 500, the next tightest has a limit of 25,000 barrels. Wow. wow. So come on guys, really, do your job down there in Annapolis. Don't kill economic development and kill jobs and kill wages because a couple of guys are in the back room telling you that, oh, this is a compromise? This is, we're meeting everybody halfway? No. Go down to the Senate and do three things. 
don't mention my name, I'm not their favorite guy, but... Uh, <laughs> number one, the barrel limit needs to be raised to 10,000, 15,000, and 20,000. Get it back in. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, the operating hours need to be either left alone or completely remove the restrictions and let the local jurisdictions do whatever it is they do with their other establishments. Yeah. And the third thing, this pay to play operation they have going where part of the barrels they might give you have to be, so, get this, sold to a distributor. And the distributor takes them to their warehouse, unloads them, then they unload your beer that you produced with your ingredients and your sweat equity and your labor, and they then put the barrels back on the truck and bring them back to you and sell them back to you. If that isn't the most backwards, upside down, crazy government meddling baloney that you ever heard, I help me understand it. So be specific. No barrel limits or very high ones. No pay to play stuff. And get out of the way on the operating hours. Let the local jurisdictions govern it. And bring our state you know, back to somewhat of a normal relationship with the rest of the country as far as this fabulous craft brewing uh, sector that we have. It's not really craft brewing, it's Maryland brewing. It's the only beer that's increasing in sales. All of the big boys, Budweiser, Coors, Miller Lite, all that stuff, they're flat as a pancake with their sales. But the products that you all produce are wildly popular. Why? Because they're interesting, they're exciting, they're innovative, they're entrepreneurial, they meet people's needs. And they're good. affordable. Yeah, and they're excellent. So, I don't know, I got up here, I was kind of all calmed down thinking about opening day and I was feeling happy. But now I'm kind of mad. I'm really mad at what's going on in the state. And I hope that you all will get on the phones, get on the internet, send to your networks, you know, a very specific message. We're tired of taking crumbs from people that don't have our best interests and don't have our back. And we expect our own legislators to stop feeding us to these uh, backroom, I guess you call them lobbyists, I don't know, that would be too good a term, I guess, for some of these folks. <laughs> but you, you gotta tell your senators, don't sell you out. Don't sell us out for crumbs on the table. Don't buy this compromise stuff. Don't take 2,000 barrels here and a thousand there. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll grandfather in a few of you. Oh, here's the thing. We're gonna grandfather in some of you guys. That's the legislature just to shut you up. But everybody else, all the new people, all the growth in the sector, oh boy, we're gonna stick it to them good. Don't let that happen. Don't accept that. Stick up for Maryland, stick up for cold beer, stick up for Ben Franklin who said, I know that God loves me and wanted me to be happy because he let us invent beer. <laughs> <laughs> and have a cold one on me tonight, and uh, I am so pleased to see the Secretary of Commerce, Mike Gill, here. Cheers. All right. <laughs> bosses in Annapolis have somehow got themselves talked into being against the beach because, you know, they don't like school after Labor Day. They don't, they don't like summer. And now they've got everybody going on record saying they don't like beer. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what the bosses are doing down there, but you guys need to speak out and bring them to a screeching halt. Get this bill passed, you need the bill passed, but get those limits raised right up into the sky and tell your senators that they've got to act. Uh, not just, hey, smooth things over, and we'll give you guys a little bit. As long as you lower the volume, God's sakes, 
Don't call, don't get Francho going. <laughs> let's, let's keep it all under the carpet. Don't do it. Future of your business, future of your future peers and colleagues. Hold your heads up proud and don't let the government do it to you. It's not fair. No, it's not. And it's not out in the open. Thank you. And uh, so let me turn it over to my favorite Secretary of Commerce. His boss, you know, no good deed goes unpunished because apparently I guess he's a Republican and that's considered, <laughs> oh my God, how could he possibly do something right? <laughs> well, he's doing something right tonight by having his Secretary of Commerce here. Yeah. And I would love to have Mike Gill, who is a tremendous advocate for small businesses in the state of Maryland, 